Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to User Education. Um, I would like to continue talking about forced oscillations. The previous lecture was about one particular case when the frequency of force which acts periodically on, on the object on the spring um, has a different angular frequency than um, the inherent uh, natural uh, frequency of oscillation of the um, object on the spring. So the object on the spring without external force was described by this differential equation times t and um, the general solution was um, x of t is equal to a cosine omega 0 t plus b sine omega 0 t where omega 0 is square root of k over m actually I can rewrite my equation if I will divide it by m I will have x of t plus omega 0 square x of t is equal to 0 omega square is k over m so if I divide everything by m I will have k over m that's why so this is the equation it's more convenient to use omega 0 and this is a general solution now in case I have an external force my um, equation becomes t again so if this is the periodic force which acts on the object and that's exactly what we were, do we were doing in the previous lecture and omega is frequency of the external force then this is an equation and in case omega and omega zero are different, which was actually the case in the previous lecture, we came up with first one partial solution, and then we added the general solution to an uh, original uh, equation without any force. This is a homogeneous differential equation. This is non-homogeneous, and I explained that in the previous lecture. So what we have to do, we have to find one particular solution to a non-homogeneous equation and add all general solutions to a homogeneous, corresponding homogeneous equation. And that's how we get general solution to a non-homogeneous. Now, in the previous case, when omega and omega zero were different, we were using one particular um, uh, solution in the format of cosine with some kind of a constant constant times cosine omega t, we found, we found that constant, and that's how we found the whole solution. And the problem is that solution had omega square, omega zero square minus omega square in the denominator. So for a case when omega zero and omega and, uh, and omega are different, we can do that. In this case, this lecture is dedicated to the case when these two are equal. So I will no longer use index 0. So this is my case. I have only one omega, which is both the frequency of periodic oscillation of the force and inherent uh, natural frequency of uh, angular uh, angular frequency of oscillations of the spring on the force on, on, the, on the object on the spring without the force okay so with force and without force basically the same omega force is acting periodically and the spring has this inherent uh, natural uh, frequency also the same now, obviously, it happens when you are, for instance, you are pushing something on a swing, and you're pushing with exactly the same um, 
uh, frequency as the spring itself is uh, moving back and forth. That's exactly the case. With the spring it's exactly the same thing. So the spring by itself has certain oscillations and you're pushing with the same frequency. So whenever a spring goes into a squeezing mode, you are squeezing even further. Whenever uh, it's trying to stretch, you're stretching even further. And what and what happens in this case? Well, what happens in this case is so-called resonance, and we will talk about this mathematically. So all we have to do is to find a solution, partial solution, to this differential equation, and then adding a general solution to a, a corresponding homogeneous equation, we will have a general solution to a non-homogeneous. All right, so we will rewrite it slightly differently, which is x plus k over m, again, that's omega square, x of t is equal to f divided by m cosine omega t. So that's my... Um, non-homogeneous solution. All I have to find is partial solution. I will find this partial solution similarly to the previous lecture, but in the previous lecture I had a little simpler form. I had just a cosine, basically. When this is zero, I can have just, just a cosine, because the second derivative of the cosine is a cosine, so I can always find some kind of coefficient to make it zero. In this case it's not exactly the same, but uh, you, you really have to look for in some kind of um, uh, function which contains uh, sine or cosine and maybe a little bit more complicated. Now, people were trying to do this and they found basically that function partial solution of this type, some kind of coefficient times um, t times sine of omega t would work. And I will explain why it works. It's an intelligent guess. I mean, people were trying sine by itself with some kind, kind of coefficient or a cosine. They got this problem with zero in the denominator, so these functions did not work in this particular case. So next, more complicated than just a sine, is t times sine. Okay, let's try it, and let's see what happens. Okay. If this is a function, let's take its first derivative, partial solution, is equal to uh, q times sine omega t, that's derivative of this times that, now derivative of that times this, so plus q times t times derivative of sine is cosine, but we have to put omega because I have multiplication interval function. So that's my first derivative. My second derivative of this partial solution would be derivative of this. Q is um, Q times derivative of sine is a cosine. I have to multiply by omega because it's in their function. Here is again, it's a combination t and cosine. So first we will put q times omega times cosine omega t. And that's, so that's this function derivative of this. Now this derivative of that would be minus sine because it's a cosine. So it would be sine. So q times t times omega. Omega would be in square and sine of omega t. From cosine it's minus sine, and internal function omega, you have an omega, now it's omega square. Now, let's substitute it into this equation. So what happens is, into this equation. Okay. So we will have this, let me just write it down, q omega cosine omega t plus q omega cosine omega t minus q t omega square sine omega t. 
plus omega squared times function x. x is this. So it's q t sine of omega t. And it's equal to this. OK. Now, lo and behold, this is the same as this, plus and minus. So what do we have now? Now, this is uh, the same expression. It's just double. So it's 2 q omega cosine omega t on the left. And on the right, I have f0 m cosine omega t. Now, that's supposed to be equal for any t, because it's an equality of two functions, which means that these coefficients must be the same. Cosine and cosine, that's fine. So from here, we have q is equal to f0 divided by 2m omega. So that's a solution. So instead of q, I can put f0 to m omega, and this is my partial solution. I have partial solution to a, a non-homogeneous differential equation, this one. And now all I have to do is to add general solution to a homogeneous corresponding. And we know what that is. So my general solution to this equation is partial solution, which I have just found. plus general solution to a corresponding homogeneous equation. That's it. That's a general solution to our equation in case of, well, let's, let's call it as it is, in case of resonance, in case of the frequency of the periodic um, oscillation of the function uh, of the external f uh, of the external uh, force is equal to inherent um, uh, frequency of oscillation of the spring s with, with an object without the force. So that's a general solution. Now, again, as you remember uh, from the previous lecture, I um, modify this expression by having this type of conversion a over d is equal to cosine phi and b over d is equal to sine phi that's very easy to prove that this is exactly what it is there are there are d and phi which actually can be replacing this which means it will be uh, this part plus d uh, and then that would be a divided by square root so it's a cosine phi this would be a sine phi so it would be a cosine of their difference again I display I, I actually explained in detail in the previous lecture so I don't want to repeat the same thing so this is my general solution. d and phi are two constants, basically. So for any d and phi, this is a solution to our differential equation. Now, depending on the initial conditions, we can find d and phi. So let's just substitute some concrete numbers, and we will see what happens. Let's say that our initial position of the of the object is at the neutral position when it's not stretched and not squeezed the spring and no initial spring no initial speed 
and then we start basically pushing with certain frequency omega um, with certain force so what happens well let's just substitute oh by the way this is T okay let's just substitute these two and see what happens with D and phi and we will find the equation which describes uh, oscillation with this periodic force in case of our uh, object initial is in neutral position at no initial speed okay x of 0 so this is x why did I put x of p it's x of t okay initial um, position is 0 so I substitute 0 here and 0 here and that would be 0 right so if 0 here is 0 and this would be d times cosine of phi well minus phi and phi cosine is a um, even function so that's equal to zero now the first derivative okay so what's the first derivative of this okay it's uh, f zero to m omega t times cosine omega t times omega plus f zero to m omega times this so that's sum of this and this would be minus uh, uh, omega sine of omega t minus phi ok, we substitute 0 for um, t now this would be 0 because t is equal to 0 this would be 0 because sine of 0 is 0 so I have minus d omega etc so it's d times omega times sine of this is 0 so it's phi is equal to 0 so we have two things this and this well omega not equal to 0 now sine of phi and cosine of phi cannot simultaneously be equal to zero now we have d times cosine is equal to zero and d times sine is equal to zero so uh, d must be equal to zero because if d is not equal to zero it means that sine and cosine both are zero which is impossible because sine square plus cosine square is equal to one right so d is equal to zero which means this is zero and the only thing which describes our oscillation in this particular case is this function so for this very simple case when my initial position is zero and they don't have any initial push to the object my uh, motion of the object is described by this equation so what is this well don't forget this t t is very important which means as the t coming as the t going as the time is increasing this without the t would be just a plain sinusoidal but multiplied by t it would be first a smaller one but then bigger one and bigger one and bigger one and bigger one so it will be uh, inscribed into the angle basically uh, with greater and greater oscillations well in theory to infinity but obviously this is not uh, practical because the spring has certain limits but in any case within certain uh, uh, time frame uh, within certain movements where the elasticity of the spring is really described by the Hooke's law which is not very far from the neutral position this would be a function which describes the oscillations and precisely because there is this multiplier t that's what makes it resonance that's what make, makes the whole thing 
go uh, with a greater and greater amplitude. And that's exactly what we're using when we are uh, entertaining our children on, on a swing, when we are pushing a little bit, a little bit more, a little bit more, but we are pushing in sync, in, in sync synchronously with the um, oscillations of the uh, uh, of the swing itself. Well, basically that's it. I do suggest you to read the notes for this lecture. So you have to go to Unizor, uh, go to Physics 14, the uh, part which which we're talking right now about is called waves, and within the waves there is mechanical oscillations as the topic, and this is the last lecture in that topic. Well, that's it, thank you very much, and good luck. <laughs>